The 3.22 patch is live and it brought with it what might be the golden age of salvage. There are many ways to earn AUEC in Star Citizen, but none are as equally relaxing and rewarding as salvaging. The recent patch has added the feature to fracture ships, completely absorbing them for all they have to offer. There are currently two salvage ships in the game. The Vulture, a Schmedium ship manufactured by Drake, and the Aegis Reclaimer, which is a behemoth of a vessel and one of the largest currently in the game. For the purposes of this guide, we will focus on the single-seated Vulture. The start of our salvage journey begins the same place all industrial lives begin. On the barren plains of Hurston, if we head down to test the spaceport in Lorville, inside we can find the New Deal, or we can purchase the Vulture for a little over 1 million AUEC. You can also purchase the Reclaimer here later for, uh, oh. Yeah, that's uh, that's for another video. The Vulture is a pretty cool ship with some nifty features. Despite its size, it only has size 1 components and a measly 580 something liter fuel tank, making its range shockingly limited. On the bright side, that's where the downsides end. The back of the ship drops down into a wide ramp leading into the 12 SCU cargo bay. Climbing up the interior ladder will bring you to the very cramped but functional living space before reaching the pilot seat. If you decide to stuff the rear of the ship full with salvage, you can use the very handy side ladder and door to enter and exit the ship. Those long arms extending out from the frame hold our salvage tools. Each side is equipped with a beam that holds two modules, but more about those later. But you can purchase the scrapper modules on Hurston and other areas across the verse to change them out. In between these arms is the ripper system. This allows for the successful fracturing and absorbing of the structural portion of a ship's salvage. The coolest part about the Vulture is a printer in the back, capable of creating not only boxes of material, but a variety of hand tools as well. Since we can just create the tools we need, you don't have to purchase anything to go out salvaging, just bring the starter under suit and helmet you spawn with. So where do we even salvage? Sure, I mean, you've probably seen the remains of many ships in your travels across the verse. The easiest way though is through salvage contracts. These contracts allow you to purchase exclusive rights to a shipwreck. Those found under the general tab are safe and you're free to take your time on these. Those found under the personal tab are called risky or cleanup missions, both of which are timed and if you're not gone when the timer is up, you are in for some trouble. The cleanup mission actually pays you and is free to accept, provided you can complete it before time expires. You'll notice my list is pretty extensive here. Don't worry, yours will be too. Salvage missions come in tiers. Think of them as small, medium, and large. To unlock the next higher size, you must do the size before it. At first, these missions feel limited, but as you unlock more, they quickly populate all across the verse. With our mission in hand, let's head out. As you arrive on scene, a good first step is to switch into scanning mode and see if the ship has any cargo. If the ship has a cargo grid, it usually does, but since this cargo isn't always super valuable after the recent patch, it's just a nice bit if your friend has an extra cargo ship on hand, but not worth throwing in your vulture. You can flip into salvage mode by pressing M. Even for veteran salvagers, this looks unfamiliar, so let's take a look at what we have here. Top middle of the UI is the salvage state. The highlighted portion is what is active. HDL and HDR refer to the left and right salvage heads respectively. FRA is for fracturing, the process of breaking a ship into pieces. DIS is for disintegration, which turns those now broken pieces into space dust. Below that, you can see three icons. From left to right, you have the amount of material left on that section of salvage. Next is the overall weight of the wreck itself. And lastly, you might recognize this one. This is the symbol for shields. That's because you can't salvage a ship with shields active and doing so earns you a crime stat. So this is a helpful indicator to let you know if the shields are on. For salvage contracts, the shields are always off, but if you find a random ship across the verse that might be another player's, this is helpful to know. You might have noticed that the left and right sides of the interface look the same, but this isn't completely true. On top of either side, you can see the two modules equipped to that side's head. By default, slot one on both sides is the cinch module. The two slot on the left side is a tractor beam that can move vehicles. Slot two on the right side is the abrade module. The cinch module covers a smaller area, but it's more efficient, sacrificing overall speed to produce more material. The abrade is the opposite. It covers more than twice the area of the cinch, but produces less material from the same hull area scrape. So basically, if you want to produce more boxes, use the cinch. If you want to clear the hull faster, use the abrade. Beside those are module stats for that scraper. 
Moving down is the indicator of the hull surface, basically tells you if it's scrapable or not. The little bar on the outer edge is the distance from the scrapper head to the wreck, similar to mining. Ideally, you want to be close enough your beams overlap. If you get too close, they will start to spread apart, but there is no optimal range per se. The little circle beside that is the percentage of material left wherever that head is actually pointing. At the bottom of that circle is the rate you are extracting material. The last important thing here is the filler station at the bottom right. This was a huge quality of life change in 3.22. As before, you had to go back and forth from the pilot seat to the printer to print every single box. Now you can collect up to 13 boxes worth of material before ever having to print one. Amazing. Now that we know what we are looking for, let's get started. Left click to begin stripping the hull and revealing the ship structure underneath. Oh yeah, there's that beautiful salvage glow we all love. As the surface glows bright orange, you'll see it fade away to the frame underneath and your filler station will start to well fill. You can move your ship to adjust the beam or you can press G for gimbal mode and it will keep your ship stationary. You can switch between modules by right clicking. By left clicking like before, we can activate both sides, but this isn't exactly going to work. Let's turn these off and instead press right alt A to activate just the left side. Press them again to turn them off. Right alt D does the same thing before the right side. Continue scrapping in whatever pattern tickles your fancy and we'll be right back. I'm going to take a second guys to ask you to please like the video if you found it helpful so far and subscribe because you never know when I may make another guide that's helpful for you. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Alright, up to this point we've been collecting one type of material, Recycled Material Composite, or RMC for short. Each single SCU box is worth almost 14k, nearly double what it was before. 3.22 also brought with it a new material called Construction Material, which is what we're going to create now. To do this, while in salvage mode, press right alt W. Pretty cool, right? Get close to the wreck and you'll see a progress bar appear on the wreck. Closer you are, the faster it goes. Once fractured, you're ready to disintegrate. Press right alt S to change into that mode. A little difference here is that a small percentage will appear next to the progress bar. That percentage is how fast it's going to actually disintegrate. Play with your distance from the wreck piece to get a good one. The process is not limited to one target though. Think of the disintegration tool as a cone that extends out from the front of the ship. This will suck up any pieces in that cone. This is where that tractor beam can come in handy as you can move pieces closer together or spread them out however you want to do it. Each SCU of construction material is worth around 6k. In order to print your boxes, exit the pilot seat and head back to the rear of the ship. Walk up to the printer station and access the screen. You'll have two options here. Make sure auto eject is enabled and select whichever material you want to print. It'll continually print boxes until it runs out of that material. Then select the other material and print those boxes as well, stacking as you go. Once you've printed all your boxes and stacked them up, it's a good idea to go ahead and fill your printer with an additional 13 SCU on standby, basically doubling your haul. Now on to selling. Head to your nearest city and land wherever you can. These two materials are sold in different places. Weird, I know. The construction materials are sold at the admin office, a place you're familiar with if you're a trader. The RMC is sold at the TDD, a place more frequented by miners. Now that we've sold everything, we're not quite done. Head back to the hangar and print and stack all the boxes that you left in the printer. Get back on your motor transport and sell all the stuff you just printed. Now you're all set. If all you had was construction material, it should earn you up to 156,000. If it's all RMC you have, it'll be more along the lines of 364,000. Not a bad pay for easy work. I appreciate you guys watching. Best of luck to you in your adventures, and I'll see you guys in the next one.